Hi and welcome to my first video in this series about energy and ecosystems and today we're going to be looking at pyramids and also energy and exchange. And so the first section on this topic um, is to do with the role of autotrophs and sp specifically autotrophs um, are known as producers when we look at um, food webs or food chains. And so autotrophs produce their own food um, from sunlight and so they do this through the process of photosynthesis. And so you're probably all familiar with photosynthesis and plants and so those are always the first step within um, any food chain or food web because they produce or they take in sunlight and they therefore convert that into energy that we that um, other organisms can consume. Now an issue with um, the energy transfer from here so obviously the star or the sun produces a huge amount of energy and so not all of that energy is consumed in photosynthesis and some of the reasons for that include um, some of the light is reflected in the plant and so obviously plants usually appear green and so what they're doing is they're reflecting the green light so they're not using green light to photosynthesize with. Some of the light actually passes straight through the leaf um, and so therefore isn't absorbed to be used in photosynthesis. Others doesn't hit the leaf or the chloroplast it may hit a different organelle and therefore it can't be used and the majority of the light um, is absorbed by the atmosphere so the majority of the light that's reaching the earth is absorbed by the atmosphere and also isn't actually hitting um, the plant itself and therefore um, the amount of energy converted by the plant is very very small and so if we now go on to look on um, to look at some different terms that you might have seen before so we've looked at autotrophs being plants we also have a, a group of organisms called heterotrophs so autotrophs they make their own food from sunlight or photosynthesis. Um, heterotrophs have to consume other organisms and so there are different types of those. The first one of those is a herbivore and herbivores simply eat um, plants and so the example here is a rabbit eating a carrot. A carnivore only eats other animals so like a lion. Omnivores can eat both plants and animals so like humans. Detrivores only feed upon um, dead material and you have decomposers and the decomposers are used to break down um, organic material and they're usually microorganisms. That's something you've learned about in the nitrogen and carbon cycle. So from here we can go on to look at the difference between um, food chains and food webs. So this is an example of a food chain and you can see here that you have your um, autotroph, which is the algae which makes its food through photosynthesis, and then you have a series of consumers after this. And so within a food web you can see that the energy or that the uh, material that these organisms are made of is passed on um, up through the food chain um, because they're being consumed and so we refer to these things as consumers in fact we can refer to this as zooplankton being our primary consumer this our secondary tertiary quaternary but essentially um, you can use these terms on any um, food chain a food web is slightly different the food web shows the interaction um, between all of the living things within the ecosystem and so you can see here that you have a this is termed as a trophic level and so if you were looking at this exchange here this would be our uh, producer and this would be our primary consumer and so moving from that to that one would be an example of a moving from a trophic level and so you can see here that some organisms feed directly onto the plants and others are then fed upon um, by other um, consumers higher up but a food web essentially shows the interaction between a lot of living things. Um, it is possible for some organisms to occupy um, one or more trophic levels as they may consume um, different organisms within that. And so you, can't, you don't just have to stick to one being in a specific trophic level if you're looking at a food web. So on this food web we can go on to look at a bit more in detail um, about some of the interactions that are happening here. So a good example of what I was just saying is this organism here, um, the clapper rail. Now you can see here um, that the clapper rail could be considered not only a primary consumer because it eats um, the plant life here, but a secondary consumer as well because it feeds upon the sandhopper, which is a primary consumer. And so some things within a food web can occupy um, more than one trophic level. Um, and so now we can go on to look at the different types of pyramids. And so with ecological pyramids there are three major types. 
The first one is a pyramid of number, which um, simply states the number of organisms found um, at each trophic level. Um, the problem with um, pyramids of numbers is it can be massively skewed um, and it doesn't take into account um, if one of the organisms is a lot bigger than the other. A good example of this is caterpillars which feed upon um, trees. Obviously the tree is much much bigger um, than the caterpillar and therefore um, the pyramid would be skewed. It would show it very very narrow at the bottom so one tree and thousands upon thousands of caterpillars within um, the second trophic level. And so another type of pyramid that's slightly better than that um, is a pyramid of biomass. Now biomass takes into account the living material found at each trophic level. Um, again this is better um, than the pyramid of numbers and usually it's measured in grams per meter squared. Um, one of the issues with pyramids of biomass is it doesn't always take into account how quickly some organisms reproduce and again what you can get is a skewed idea and essentially a smaller bottom section on the pyramid and this is specifically true of organisms um, within the sea so organisms that reproduce very very rapidly um, may show a narrower band at the bottom but because they reproduce in such huge numbers um, it doesn't take into account that at the time of sampling and so not always is the biomass pyramid always the best to use the one out, the, out of the three that is the best is the pyramid of energy so what the pyramid of energy takes into account is the amount of energy moving between each trophic level um, and if you look a good example um, to explain why some of the energy is lost between each trophic level if we look at the eagle and the snake um, when the eagle feeds upon the snake not all of the energy found within the snake is made available um, to the eagle. Some of it may have been used in respiration um, and also may therefore um, producing heat. Um, some of it is lost as faeces um, and urine and some of the material is left undigested by the predator. So for instance um, the eagle wouldn't digest the, the bones of the snake and therefore this um, doesn't show you know, a 100% a um, exchange. And usually you can expect the exchange between each trophic level to be at roughly 10%. Now there is a mistake on this diagram here. Um, when you learn about um, energy pyramids and um, looking at the unit for energy, it isn't in kilocalories. The, the unit that we use for this is measured in kilojoules per metre squared per year. Um, if you join me on the next video where we'll be looking at energy transfers.